if you're one of those people that needed additional reasons why you should not be trusting the credit bureaus, Experian, Equifax, and TransUnion, I have a brand new article here published by the CFPB, the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau. So now let's jump right into this article. You can see this is published January 5th, 2022. So this is brand new. This is brand new information that the CFPB has released. So now let's see what they're talking about. Let's read the headline. CFPB releases report detailing consumer complaint response deficiencies of the big three credit bureaus. Equifax, Experian, and TransUnion routinely fail to fully respond to consumers with errors. So if you're one of those people trying to get your credit cleaned up, you got your 609 letters, you got your 611 letters, you're sending them out certified mail and you're waiting on the credit bureaus to delete these erroneous, these inaccurate reports and findings on your credit reports. Let's find out what these credit bureaus are doing with all of our letters that we're sending out certified mail, right? So let's let's read what's going on. A new analysis by the CFPB reveals how changes in complaint responses provided by nationwide consumer reporting companies resulted in fewer meaningful responses and less consumer relief. In 2021, Equifax, Experian, and TransUnion together reported relief in responses to less than 2% of covered complaints, down from nearly 25%. So basically what they mean by the covered complaint, we have the rights to go to the credit bureaus and say, hey, give me my credit reports. Let me see what's being reported on there. And then under 611, if anything is not accurate, if anything is looking funny, uh, you're seeing information that's not being reported accurately. So like balances are just all over the place. Dates don't make sense. You're seeing accounts being uh, added onto your credit reports and you don't know who they belong to, where they came from, who is this creditor, right? You have the right to go back to the credit reporting agencies and ask them to verify this information. Where are they getting it from? Who are they getting it from? What does this information mean? Provide information. Why is this being reported? That's what cover complaints mean. So according to the CFBB, all the credit bureaus together reported relief in response to less than 2%, down from nearly 25%. That's pretty pathetic. We're going to read the BS excuse why the credit bureaus are not taking care of what they need to take care of. America's credit reporting oligopoly has little incentive to treat consumers fairly when their credit reports have errors, said CFPB director Rohit Chopra. Now, this isn't somebody that's a random person on YouTube or social media telling you that the credit bureaus are moving funny style. This is literally the director of a government agency. The CFPB director Rohit is basically saying what we've been saying for years, that the credit reporting agencies, they don't have any incentive to do what they're supposed to do. Remember the key thing here when it comes to the credit bureaus and the big lenders and the big banks, they are selling our information. So the more data, whether it's accurate or not, the more data that they have on us, they're able to take that data and sell it off to other companies. Large companies are paying big dollars in order to get our information. So there really is no incentive for the credit bureaus to start deleting and removing information because that information can be sold to another company for more money. And this right here is why the credit bureaus, they have such a horrible, horrible reputation when it comes to doing things like this. Let's continue reading. More than 200 million Americans have credit files and lenders reply on this information to decide whether to approve loans and on what terms. Consumer reporting also informs decisions about employment, insurance, housing, even essential utilities. Our credit reports, our credit profile, is so important. It's going to determine whether or not we can get approved for loans, credit cards, homes. It's going to determine uh, what our interest rate will be. If we are approved, it's going to determine whether or not we can get uh, employment by certain companies, what kind of insurance that we're able to get. Our credit reports and what's being reported on our credit profile determines pretty much every facet of our adult life. This is not something that we need to play with. Consumers submitted more than 700,000 complaints to the CFPB regarding Equifax, Experian, and TransUnion from January 2020 through September 2021, which represented more than 50% of all complaints received by the agency for that period. That's a 50% uptick over the previous year. So more and more people are using CFPB, but you gotta remember, don't use CFPB 
as some sort of magical website that's going to do all the work for you. In order to get the best results with using CFPB, you want to make sure that you have a good paper trail. I always say to send out all letters, all correspondence, certified mail. Make sure you have a paper trail of the bureaus ignoring your responses. Make a paper trail of the bureaus not responding on time. Have all of your documents organized. That way when you go to the CFPB or if you ultimately decide that you wanna hire an attorney to go after the credit reporting agencies, now you have your homework. You have enough ammo to be able to go out and do battle. And this goes to show you how many people try to go and work directly through the credit bureaus getting ignored or getting the cold shoulder and now they're having to go to CFPB in order to get results. As I continue reading this article, I'm going to show you and highlight all of the major BS excuses that the credit bureaus are using to try to wiggle their way out of accountability. FCRA requires Experian Equifax TransUnion to conduct a review of complaints sent to them through the CFPB where consumers allege there is incomplete or inaccurate information in their consumer reports and the consumer appears to have previously attempted to fix the problem with the company. The companies must then report their determinations and actions for the covered complaints to the CFPB. The credit bureaus have a specified amount of time to do their homework to make sure that everything that is being reported to your credit reports are 100% legitimate and accurate. When the bureaus don't do what they're supposed to do, we go to the CFPB to add more pressure. But what is happening after we go to the CFPB? What's actually going on now? Equifax most often promises to open investigations and sends the results to the consumers at later dates, but it would fail to provide the CFPB with the outcomes of the investigation. So not only is Equifax blowing you off, they're blowing off the CFPB as well. That's ballsy. What about TransUnion? TransUnion made similar promises and frequently failed to provide the outcomes of the investigations to the CFPB. It often stated it would take no action on complaints because it believed the complaints were submitted by third parties. Because this is something that is mentioned so often when people try to clean up their credit. The CFPB found the three companies often failed to provide substantive responses, especially when they allege the complaints were sent by third parties. However, consumers can authorize third party representatives to submit complaints on their behalf. There is no law that prohibits a credit repair company, a legitimate credit repair company, to be able to send out disputes on your behalf. However, the credit reporting agencies are using that BS excuse as a reason to brush us off and brush the CFPB off. So you can see that's a big cop out. That's all BS. They're just making up excuses not to do their homework. So let's go back down. TransUnion often stated it will take no action on complaints because they believe the complaints were submitted by third parties. Again, that's a cop out. For many complaints, Experian frequently stated it would take no action because it believed the complaints were submitted by third parties. However, it did respond to the remaining complaints with substantive responses. So although it looks like Experian is a little bit better, all three of them still are using the same cop-out just so that they don't have to be held accountable. The big three credit bureaus, they are not our friends. They are not making things uh, easy for us. They are on the side of the big banks. They're on the side of the lenders, the credit card issuers. Our data is the name of the game for them. If you ever wonder why the credit bureaus are always in some mess, there's always some class action lawsuit. There's always something going on when it comes to the credit bureaus. It's because of stuff like this. They are not playing the game fair. So what does this mean ultimately? Does this mean that we now have to just hang our heads, give up and say, well, what was me, right? Should we go that route? No. What this means is we need to be more consistent. When they go from being able to offer relief to 25% in 2019, which is not even a good stat to begin with in 2019, and now they're down to 2%, like, we got to be consistent. If you're trying to clean up your credit on your own, you don't know what to do, go down to creditcodes.com. I always put the link in every one of my videos. Download my free PDF. I actually break down the steps of what you need to do, have a full course behind that. And for those that don't even want to deal with having to send out letters, go down below in the description, click the link 18creditsolutions.com. Make sure that you have either uh, Identity IQ, MyScore IQ, or Smart Credit. 
if you have one of those credit monitoring services, get on the line with me. I do a free evaluation. I'll let you know uh, what's going on with your credit profile. And on that call, I'll give you a breakdown of what you can do to improve your credit profile. So the moral of the story is do not give up. Do not call it quits after sending one dispute. Make sure that when you're ready to fight with the credit bureaus, that your mindset is already prepared for a marathon. This is not going to be an overnight thing. For most of us, we did not mess up our credit overnight. So we're not going to be able to somehow completely fix our credit overnight. It's going to take some time either way. So, so that is all. I will catch you in the next episode. Peace. Thank you.